guys, this is Tara with Kittens, Weights, and Tarot, and today I'm jumping in with my July faves! Yay! <laughs> I love doing faves videos because I think, well, number one, I like watching other people's faves videos, and I think it's fun to kind of show off some of the things that, you know, you read or worked with or, you know, purchased or reused or repurposed, <laughs> you know, for the month, and I think it helps to give people, other people ideas on ways they could repurpose things they already have or to remind them, hey, you have this too, and hey, I haven't busted that out in quite some time. So, uh, in my opinion, I I don't think faves videos are for people to go out and necessarily go buy a bunch of stuff to, but maybe to get creative with the things that they already have uh, <laughs> after being inspired by looking at other people's stuff <laughs> let's jump into it the first thing i want to jump off into jump off into with <laughs> um is uh okay so i have my my stuff over here that is like non tarot oracle and book and crystal related. So like some of my other stuff that uh, was a fave for me in July. Uh, July, obviously I was off of work for all of July because I am a high school teacher uh, for my muggle job. And um, yeah, I, I had a lot more time for play and <laughs> having fun with other items. So there's, there's probably gonna be a lot here. So my very first fave was this awesome unicorn light. <laughs> And it changes colors like all on its own it just like fades to all these other colors and so I've been keeping it kind of on my like creativity table where my sewing machine used to be I, I need a new sewing machine I've been having to sew everything by hand um, but my pens and markers and craft stuff and books and everything is over there but yeah I love my uh, my unicorn light <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this this was a fave and um, My friends who know me well I haven't have been giving me like little pencil pouches that, that, that they thought are really cute And they're like maybe you could put your decks in there You could put like your pens and pencils, you know cuz you teach or like you could put other little magical items when you travel and I do have like my traveling deck and I made a video on like how I you know travel with like if I'm going far away like what stuff do I bring you know like what crystals and decks and and altar cloths and things like that and so um this one let's see I I think this one was like free with something but I still think it's pretty cool it's like this iridescent thing and it's huge so that if I had to bring some bigger things you know I could uh, put it in here when I travel and then uh, a friend of mine gave me this little butterfly pouch and where's this from? This is from Ipsy. So she's like, I got a little Ipsy pouch for you and it's got butterflies. And I was like, heck yeah. Uh, and then I found this, um, I don't know, like one of the stores somewhere, <laughs> but I thought it was really cute. Uh, oh, Target, I got this at Target, yes you know, cause it's summertime. Well, actually, you know, anytime sounds like a good time for any of these treats on here, but yeah, I thought that'd be really cute for a deck or some traveling goodies. Um, and then I got these a while back. Uh, they came with some goodies that I gave to my cousins for Christmas. Uh, but I ended up keeping these, like I gave them the other goodies, but I kept these ones and I thought they're really cute. Uh, and they actually have a little mesh back to them which makes them pretty unique. Uh, so I'm like kind of wondering like what I might travel with and put in here. So we have donuts and we have a little unicorn, but I thought this was really cute. <laughs> the next couple of things is actually, uh, are actually a spray and a couple of oils. And uh, both of them come from uh, the Witch's Moon and the Witch's Bounty Box by the same company. Uh, but I am in love with their oils. And yes, I do like to make my own like little oil blends, my witchy oil blends and my sprays. And actually I, I made a spray, but I made it for August. So I can't really like put it in this video. Um, but the first spray that I love that, well, the spray for July that I love is the Luna Aura spray. And Okay, so here's the synchronicity with this. Um, 
my cousin's name is Selena, the moon, and how this smells, which is very like feminine and I don't know, kind of like a dark, like feminine, uh, actually kind of smells like her. <laughs> So this actually smells like my cousin in a bottle. Um, my cousin's no longer here on earth, but uh, I don't know. I just, I thought this was really nice. It was like, oh, it's like my cousin. So uh, I kind of spray it in parts of the house because it kind of smells a little bit like her perfume. Not a whole lot, but it, I don't know. And the whole like essence of the smell is like, my cousin Selena. So I was pretty psyched about getting this in my box. <laughs> uh, and then also in July, I've been using the Athena oil, which is from the Witch's Roots box actually, and uh, the Moon oil, which I think came in the same box with this, uh, which was the, the the moon box. Okay, so this was the witch's moon box and this was the witch's roots box. So um, how I've been using this, I, I spray this on myself um, in the morning, in the afternoon, <laughs> in the evening. I, I kind of just spray it whenever just because I really like the scent of it and it has um, really nice memories attached to it. Uh, even though obviously the spray wasn't around, you know, when my cousin was around, but you know, and then this, I uh, take the little dropper, I put it on my forearms and I rub my forearms together and I just feel like it's very grounding. And so if I feel like I need to be a little bit more grounded throughout the day, I, I use this, but I put this on uh, first thing in the morning once I get dressed and everything. Um, and then I put it on in the evening so I can ground myself into bed and I can just like go to sleep, you know? So uh, this was really good. Um, and then when I get out of the shower, I like to put the moon oil on me because I think, you know, I, because I, I shower pretty early. So it's like, you know, throughout the day, like my intuition's open. I am open to the signs universe, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so this has been pretty good and, and they smell really nice too. So, and also, uh, as you guys know, I do photography on the side. I have my little photography company photos by Tara and I, well, I mean, I'm always kind of using my big DSLR camera, but I got to bust out my little Hello Kitty, like Polaroid camera, you know, and it's got like, you know, the pictures aren't the best, but they're cute. I like the, the, the fact that they're not the best pictures. Like I, I like them. <laughs> and so I had to bust this out again because I had my, um, uh, Wally's World Oracle, you know, come in in July and I had to distribute all the decks. And so for some of the people that backed me on Kickstarter for their tier, I had to take a picture of Wally with a card and like do a little reading and everything. So I got to bust this out again. So I've been having fun with my little Polaroid camera. And actually, just before I came on camera here, I decided to take a little picture of little Wally Wally Toe and Loki. <laughs> so Loki is on the, um, I don't know, the, the shelf in the window uh, in his room and Wally was sleeping on Loki's bed. So this is my boys. Speaking of my boys, this was a fave this month. So watch this. What is in this box? Looks like a Wally and a Loki. <laughs> just over a year now so we brought loki in in mid-july of last year um well actually brought him in he ran into our house <laughs> he came into our lives and then into our house uh and he became our lokester and it's been you know now over a year that we've had the lokester and having wally and loki get along together has been a little difficult not because loki uh, doesn't like Wally or anything. It's because he he wants to do things that are very cat-like and Wally doesn't know He's a cat. He's like I'm a puma <laughs> So I have to say that <laughs> But um, yeah, so Wally also was not acclimated to cats like he didn't really grow up around cats like he uh, his mother died in kitten birth so um, He was never raised by a cat. He's been had 
like hand fed since the moment he was born um, and so he's always been around humans he's always been around people and so he doesn't do well like he does well actually around dogs he loves dogs it's just like other cats he really doesn't like cats he's not a cat person um, and Loki is much more cat like obviously than Wally is Wally thinks he's a people so it's been difficult having them get along but to have to be able to take a video like I took and actually I put that on my Instagram stories that's why the angles all weird but um yeah they're they're like playing together now and uh, I mean it's still not perfect you know Wally still sometimes wants to slap Loki in the face which we're like please don't do that Loki doesn't like being hit in the face uh Loki doesn't mind being hit in the butt though because he thinks it's like a like good game you know <laughs> but yeah I mean it, it's not perfect but we are so much better than they were last July. <laughs> and the last thing in my faves for this section, before we get to the woo woo section, um, is my crest white strips. So this is the professional effects, the 3D white Lux edition. And um, I decided to do a little bit of a touch up on my teeth because I had my 20 year class reunion at the end of July. And I just kind of wanted to look my best, you know, after not seeing people in like 20 years. So, you know, I, 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 I lightened up my teeth a little bit. I mean, they're already kind of pretty white anyway. I just wanted to make sure they were like a blinding white light. light. <laughs> um, but yeah, mostly, uh, I think my teeth are pretty white naturally just because like I don't drink coffee and, um, I don't drink red wine, like things that stain my teeth. Uh, nowadays it's just like white wine or beer or green teas, sometimes black tea every once in a while. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty anal about my teeth because there are many people in my family who have dentures and that's not going to be me. <laughs> okay, then we get into the woo-woo. Um, so I'm going to go into crystals first and there's been one particular type of crystal that I was really drawn to in July, although I work with many crystals and obviously I do crystal grids like for my Patreon group, um, but this particular type of crystal are the Aura crystals, so the um, treated quartz. So some of them are like titanium treated, some are treated with gold, um, but treated quartz uh, for to turn them into Aura quartz has been like my jam and the way they feel and it's just been really good. So this is some of like my blue Aura quartz that I have, or Aqua Aura as they say. Um, and I know some people don't like working with treated quartz, um, but basically stones get treated underground naturally. <laughs> uh, this is some other, uh, you know, I, I think this one is called like sunshine or golden quartz something like that I don't know this one's this one's probably one of my favorites but um and this one a little rainbow quartz and a little angel aura quartz you guys can see that this is also an angel aura that has been uh, except for right now because I'm ma making this video but uh, this has been in my pocket um all month long I do take it out when I go to sleep and I put it under my pillow. And uh, this one came in, I think this was in the witch's bounty box, but I've really been loving this. And actually it's the stone that is perpetually on my Wally's World Oracle, the copy that I have for myself. Um, and I just feel like the energy that it's that soaks into the deck from this is pretty awesome. And to me, this has a really calming effect and it's actually been really good for my heart because I do have uh, PVC, so premature ventricular contractions. So, uh, and I also have tachycardia. So I got all kinds of like good heart stuff, but all that was like, thanks to a really stressful school year. And now I have a permanent heart condition. Woo! <laughs> Alrighty then. But that stone has been helping quite a bit. So thank you, our records. <laughs> Then we get into some books and the wonderful Kelly Bear um, over on her channel, Kelly Bear, <laughs> um, has, did a whole like, um, I think it was a two, three, four part series on her favorite herbal books. And so it went 
Amazon into cart into cart into cart so I got a lot most of her recommendations not all of her recommendations but the ones that I was really drawn to I I got and I tore through them metaphorically I didn't actually tear my books but I read through them very fast and um, I enjoyed them all and the one I think that I'm enjoying the most because it gets the most use because I do this every day is I drink tea every day so this is the uh, healing herbal teas and this is by Sarah Farr and let me just tell you that okay I may not have every ingredient that she has in here when she's making her teas so I kind of figure out what I have on hand that is similar uh, because I think that's kind of what you should do you know you you take what is like already there you know so that you don't have this like spice cabinet or herbal cabinet with like all this stuff that you've only used once which is what fancy baking kind of you know I don't like fancy baking because sometimes you have to buy this very specific very expensive ingredient for this thing and then you only use it once and then it's taking up space you know so when I bake I bake with what's on hand and I make magic <laughs> and I've been making magic with teas and although I love my teas maybe everybody else doesn't love them as much because they may taste a little too earthy well with this book this has given me inspiration with like to go beyond the thought process of what goes into tea like taking everyday food items like stuff that you might actually put in food and like put it into your teas and you're like oh my god like why didn't I think of that before like why didn't I think to like put chocolate in my tea because it's really freaking good <laughs> so uh yeah so this book has been great so if you are into making your own teas or at least getting inspiration for for teas and, and kind of changing them up this is really good so if you have you know some herbs and spices and stuff for making food in your pantry on hand uh this is really good and she gives you kind of like the breakdown i mean it's in different chapters of like medicinal teas energetic teas love teas and you know all kinds of stuff like that uh but she'll give you uh the ingredients she will tell you you know if you're gonna make um, kind of a cold tea or you're gonna make a hot tea you know the best way to do that gives you a little bit about the tea and why she chose the herbs that she did uh, she also does kind of a, a standout let me see where, where she picks an herb to kind of talk about because she thinks it's pretty freaking awesome um, um, I may have passed it oh but she also talks about teas for uh, different parts of the year like spring summer fall winter all of that but I did a whole like re book review video on this so if you're interested just you know um, go to my playlist and look at my book reviews and you will find this because I think it's the only book review that's on there and I promise to do more book reviews now because now that I have like a lot of books that I've read that probably need reviewing so yes Another one of Kelly Bear's recommendations was the Green Wiccan Herbal and I love this one because it's simplistic, it's visually pleasing because I'm a very visual person, um, but it's mixing spells with herbs um, and also using it for wellness. So this one says love, fertility, and sex spells. Um, so here we have some spells at the back um, but it's also talking about uh, the different herbs to use and and why that particular herb might be nice but at the front of the book is an explanation of all these different types of herbs so here you have valerian and lemon balm and catnip and thistle and that's funny because i turned to this page literally before i started filming um so i think universe try and tell me something so let's say uh, you want to know more about lemon balm it talks about the magical uses non magical uses uh, the deities and the planet that's associated with that and it also gives you a little simple spell just to use with that particular herb so I thought that that was really interesting you know and obviously you know I'm all about uh, doing some home remedies some herbal remedies so I am all into this book plus I'm a little witchy one so I like to do little spells using my herbs so, <laughs> so this this is really cool um, and the author is uh, Silja or Silha and another book that has been rocking my world is the legendary ladies by Anne Shen and this is I mean it kind of looks like it's a children's book um, but I don't think I would read it with small children teenagers maybe teenagers and adults but 
Um, it's it goes over um, n obviously not all of the deities that there are, but um, some of them or a good number of them. And so it'll give you like the origin of the deity, like a little story, like a very short story, like doesn't go into all kinds of detail and the whole backstory and the whole mythos about that person or that um, deity. But I think that it's really interesting. And plus at the bottom, it'll tell you uh, when might be a good time to call on that particular deity. So what I use it for, which is uh, a divination that I like, is bibliomancy. So uh, here we have uh, Oya. Um, so I might do a little something like this where I might flip through. I love the artwork. Uh, sorry, I landed on one that said protection. <laughs> so um, here I landed on the deity Allah. And it says the origin is... Uh, uh, Ibo or Ibo. Uh, the mythology, daughter of the supreme creator Chi, Allah is one of the most important Alusi deities in Western Africa. She's the queen of life and death, and she brings abundance both in humans and in earth as quickly as she takes it away. Allah is a keeper of morality for humans, and those who transgress and commit crimes will be punished by her. She often warns people first in dreams to change their ways before she sends her army of ants. Well, that's unpleasant. The custom of burying our deceased in the ground comes from Allah's legend. She decreed that all souls be returned to her womb. She is often portrayed seated on a golden throne next to her husband, Amadioa, the sky Alusi. Her earthly messenger is the python, highly revered in Ibo or Ibu communities. Call on Allah when you want to find justice or protection from those who harm you. So I thought that was really, you know, it's really interesting, you know, and it's just a snippet. So maybe um, I think this would be good, a good jumping off point, you know, if you are like, wow, that's a really interesting deity, you know, so that you could do a little bit of Googling, a little bit of research, a little bit of book search um, and find out more about these deities. So yeah, a book that I haven't finished, but I am, um, I don't know, I'm a good number of pages in. How many pages am I in? I am 120 pages in, uh, and I love it so far. This is called Black Wings Beating, and actually, and this is by Alex London. This was a book recommendation from one of my freshman students. We had a book fair at the end of this past school year, so the school year 2018-2019, um, and my I got to take my freshman to our like first ever book fair at that high school because usually it's like an elementary school middle school kind of thing so the kids were really excited and um they were trying to get me to buy certain books because I think they wanted me to finish reading them so that they could read them <laughs> and they're like mm, we're gonna come to your classroom next year and we're gonna borrow some of your books because I have a little like book checking book check out system uh but this one's called black wings beating and um it's it's about like a community like if a community where like their religion and everything were centered around um large birds like raptors um so it's like this whole thing where everybody's like in like the bird business and um it's kind of like I don't know there there's like these ruling families and you know it's I don't know it's kind of like Mad Max a little bit with birds <laughs> and it's it's pretty cool and like the the two main characters are these twins um and I'm kind of gauging that I think their ages are like uh in their earlier mid-20s something like that and um their father was kind of a jerk with a capital D and <laughs> but he was but you know he he gets he gets what he deserves pretty early on um and then you know obviously the the rest of it is the story of these two and um yes I am at a very pivotal point in the story right now so I can't wait for all the action the next book, um, I haven't finished reading it because I don't think it's a book that I want to like blow through. Um, I I take my time reading it because it's a book of poetry. And so this is by Tanya Markol, uh, the she book. And yes, it's got one of those covers where like your fingerprints show up on it. Like whatever. It's not because I have greasy hands. Um, she's known as the thug unicorn uh, on social media. And I got a heads up about her through Lisa over at Support of Tarot. She was like her story I think you would really appreciate it because um, it's kind of like my story so um, she has had a pretty rough go at life 
and that is putting it mildly and she's been able to translate you know her um, pain into healing and she does that through a lot of her writing and so I really love the poems in here because it's like I could have written those poems about me you know so I and and it's like it's not just you know me but I know that there's a lot of people with that same kind of uh, hurt and past and and you know healing so I think that this is a very beneficial book for anybody who maybe had a rough go at the start of life and uh, you know maybe some some rough beginnings childhood 20s maybe <laughs> kind of all over but this is this is really good. oh I do want to maybe just like read a quick poem to you maybe the one that I am on right now um it says tonight I write the manifesto of my soul the angel guiding me from my unconscious to whole setting free the me that no longer exists to the song of heart I resist yet persists it's taken decades to heal what I thought was a burden. This gift I now befriend found uh, behind a dark curtain. To the power of my pain and the rebirthed me, I call the north, Jai Ma, blessed be. To my smoldering ashes and my heavy crown, one hand on my heart, one hand on the ground. To facing fear and honoring death, to life, to spirit, to creation, and to breath. So, um, and they're all just kind of numbered at the top and all the different poems. And I just, I love it. I love it, you guys. That's why it's a fave. <laughs> and there's one little dude that I want to make sure makes it into these faves before I get on to the final thing, which is Dex, which is for maybe what a lot of you have been waiting for. Um, and that is Squiggy. Everybody say hello to Squiggy. <laughs> the dude got Squiggy for me during our... Uh, Amazon days where it was like prime day or whatever where you could like get all kinds of discounts and and all of that but yeah I got squiggy I love this little tail um, squiggy is another jelly cat which we are a fan of jelly cat because they are so soft and so nice and yes they are a little more pricey and I don't know anybody who spends that much money on their baby like for a stuffed animal that they're probably gonna poop on and throw up on um, but for adults I think it's fun <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you got the cash to drop that on your kid, that's cool. <laughs> um, I, I wish my family would have dropped coin like that on me, but that didn't happen. Anyway, uh, the dude got me Squiggy as he usually gets me a lot of stuffies and Squiggy did a reading over on Instagram using my Wally's World Oracle. So I just wanted to make sure you guys saw Squiggy. <laughs> Speaking of the Wally's World Oracle, what a great segue into the decks that were my fave in July. This one is going to be my forever fave, but I'm just going to show it to you because um, it, it got distributed to everybody who backed me on Kickstarter and who pre-ordered the deck and, and now their orders are just kind of coming in to order it because now it's in stock. But it's my Wally's World Oracle, A Healing Journey Through Sacred Sites. And I was so excited when this came in. So um, this uh, got backed um, in the middle of May. So yeah, the Kickstarter started in April and then it ended in May. Um, and then, yes, the decks came in and I was super excited right away I got I got to checking them all out and then packing them and yes so this has been just freaking awesome I love seeing um, you know pictures and people doing reviews on YouTube and um, you know pictures on Instagram of people like it made it safely and I'm just <sighs> and the fact that Wally's World is actually traveling around the world you know so people have bought it in uh, Scotland and different parts of England and Australia and uh, all different parts of the US and Canada um, the Philippines like <laughs> um, and yeah so this is just it's so nice to see what was in my brain for like a couple of years like this this is how I imagined it would feel like it would be it would look and it's well hashtag dreams come true um but yeah so a lot of the images in here are are my own but I also was able to get images from people in our community of their favorite healing uh spots so it's sacred to them it's very special to them they revere it uh because of its healing properties and what they were able to get from it 
Uh, and so it's it's a way to kind of share this with everybody, you know, because not everybody has the money to travel all over the world to these particular spots. So it's tapping into the energy through a visual visual aid such as this to be able to tap into that healing energy so that we can, you know, uh, see if, if a place that's been special is special to somebody else could possibly offer us healing. And so far, everybody has been loving it and I'm so excited. So yes, this is a forever fave. It's my deck. And if you want to buy my deck, it's at kittensweightsandtarot.com. I have it on Etsy as well, um, but it's a it's $5 more on Etsy and you have to pay for shipping. But if you go to my website, it's $5 less and you don't pay sh for shipping because because Etsy's a little bit more expensive for people to have their stuff on there and they're a little, you know, fees be a little bit high. So, <laughs> so that's why on my website, you know, I can do it like that. And um, yay, I'm super excited. <laughs> all right, so jumping into all the other decks uh, that I was loving in July. July was a lot of fun because I will didn't have to work my muggle job. I could just do my readings and I could do my healings and I could do all that stuff that just makes my heart sing and prepare for my operas actually. So I have a couple of operas in case you don't know that are coming up uh, one in September, one in October. So the one in September is the Pirates of Penzance uh, and the one in October is Romeo and Juliet. So I'm super excited. Um, so okay. The deck that, I didn't get this in July, I got this a, a while ago, but this is uh, Terra de la Nuit, and it's a photo manipulation deck that I really, really get along with and I really love, and so I, I used it in daily draws, I used it in spreads, I used it for clients, I, I, I just, I use this actually quite a bit, but I found myself reaching for it more in July, even though I felt like with July, July Fry here in San Diego, it's very sunny, it's very hot. Um, and so I brought out some of my more lighthearted decks, but this one just really wanted to come out and I don't ever feel that this is a, a dark, dark deck. Although um, visually speaking, it does look dark. Um, as far as readings go, I feel that it has a very, very loving, very gentle um, feel to it but it doesn't, it doesn't back away from some of the heavy stuff. You know, it still lets me know how things are, but yeah, I've been digging. And the deck that I think pairs really well with the Tarot de la Nuit is the um, El Qui, or El Qui. <laughs> In Spanish, it would be Qui, <laughs> Oracle. And this one is by, um, I think the, the artist is Meli Melanie Dellen and Arwen Lynch is the writer of the guidebook. Oh, and I did want to say that the um, the creators and artists of this deck is Alexandra V. Bach and Carol Ann Scansi. The Elki. I've, I, I have been reading with this one separately, but I've actually just been reading it in tandem with the Tarot de Lunui, which is why I think it's been going hand in hand. I did get this one in July and maybe that's why I'm reaching for that other deck so much more but <sighs> the messages oh my gosh and I put this deck aside because I like to put aside like everything that I used for the month uh, so that I could do my my faves videos and it was like so hard to put this down for just a couple of days so that I could <laughs> I could get everything together for the faves video um, oh and by the way in this deck there was an error and and two of these cards came with the deck so the uh the message was not lost on me um what the universe was trying to say i love when sometimes decks come with like a double card or a missing card and it's like <laughs> um actually you know what was is was strange like i said that i i use these two together there was a double card in this deck as well. And I think that double card was the Seven of Swords and in here it was Strength. So, very interesting. <laughs> but yes, a fave for July and probably forever. Another one that is not new is my Nature's Pharmacy deck. Um, I use it quite often actually. And actually I use it mostly just for my teas. Um, like if I have something that's wrong, like I'm feeling a little sick, uh, my throat hurts, something like that. Um, 
it, it's actually it's two-sided so it will have the the herb on one side and it will give you information about it and like a little bit of background its botanical name plant family name and its origin and the current uses of that particular herb so I just want to get you guys to be able to see it um, but yeah I, I've had this for a few years now and I use it quite a bit I'll pull a few cards to figure out like what I could be putting into my teas um, but I love the imagery the imagery uh, does come from I forget what and inside the little pamphlet here it tells you um, what museums and and things like that these these images came from but yeah I, I love this deck I don't really use it for readings I use it for healings um, and if I'm going to be doing an energetic healing for somebody um, I might pull one of these cards to kind of tap into the energy of that plant so yes <laughs> okay so this one is a new acquisition and this is uh, Le Beaumont and uh, so it's like the um, the beautiful world or the love like love of the world um i know monde is is world <laughs> sorry my my french is not that good but i do practice with my friend steph who is from belgium so you know french is her her first language um so this is the regency tarot deck and this was created by jennifer Poole. And actually, I was trying to get my friend Steph to get this deck too, but she wasn't quite sure if this would be for her. Um, but I love the images. It is all female, which I think is what's off-putting to her. You know, she would like more masculine figures for uh, like the kings, you know, in the court cards. But I don't know. I like it. And yes, it is pippish, which is why, or actually it is pips, <laughs> which is why I, I think she doesn't like it as well. But I've learned to kind of like some of my, you know, pip decks, you know, I don't have a whole lot of pip decks because I'm more of a visual person. I need to see like what's going on with the action. Um, but I don't know. This is one of the decks where I don't, I don't mind that they're pips. I'm like, okay, they're kind of cool. Maybe because they don't look like, oh, these are coins and oh, these are wands and you know, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, so yes, there are all females in here. It does have a lot, it does have a lot of blank space. So it's, it's a lot of just focus on these very simple images, um, images that were, um, stock images that the, the creator was able to put into the deck, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so here you have things like the sun and I think it was from a fashion magazine like way way back in the day <laughs> i think that's where she got those the images from um let's see if i can find some of the the quartz in here for you oh maybe i'll just talk about like some of these so um the fans here which you think of as air this would be your sword suit so the fans are the swords and this is the dagger of of swords so um she's re she's changed all the names from your your page your knight and um queen and king uh to fit more of the novels uh the names given to characters in novels of this particular era the regency era so i thought that was also really interesting to kind of change it up like that um the reticulas reticules <laughs> or reticules um these ones are your coins yes these ones are your coins uh parasols are your cups and i think that's because when they're open they kind of look cup shaped um and this is the duchess so there you got your queen there uh then you have the blue stocking which is considered like your knight i think yes your knight and the candles are your wands so yeah it's an interesting deck um and i've been having fun using it you know and it's been giving pretty good readings i still don't feel like i'd be comfortable reading for other people with it yet because i really i really want to have that connection with a deck you know before i really you know dive into helping somebody so i am still working with it but i i do love it so yes 
another Arwen Lynch deck that I picked up in July, mainly because I got the L key and then I was like, oh, well, I also want to get this one because it's been on my wish list, but it's the Secrets of the um, Mystic Grove and actually did a deck review of it. Well, as I'm filming this, the deck review was yesterday, so it aired yesterday. So if you're interested on like a full walkthrough and me talking a little bit about it, that's there for you. Um, but the artwork here is by Mary... Elaine Thomas and it's written by Arwen Lynch, the professional joy seeker. So this one is whimsical and fantasy, which is normally is not my my bag, but this one is pretty cool. So this one has also been giving some really good readings. This one actually asks for quite a lot of introspection from me. So I've been loving it for that. I love that it's so odd. But not odd, like weird, like or bad. It's just like you really have to study the image and like see everything that's going on. You're like, uh, oh, <laughs> you know. So it just asks you to be still and dive deeper. And actually, that was like a message for me all month and for this month as well. As I need to still my mind and still myself because I I tend to do a lot of things at once, um, and so I. I know that things require more of my centered focus. And so that deck actually calls me out on that quite a bit. Another deck that I've been loving is the Magic and Mediums Oracle. And this is by Anyel Reed and it is illustrated by Ash Colored. And I also did a review of this. So if you're interested in uh, seeing a full walkthrough with commentary and all of that, um, you can go check that out. And I had the great fortune of being interviewed by Anyel Reed uh, on her podcast, also called Magic and Mediums. Um, that episode should air in a couple of weeks. I'll keep you guys updated uh, when the episode actually gets to air. But this is another one of those ones where it's very simple. So there's a lot of uh, white space so that you're able to focus. And I think I am choosing decks that require a lot more focus into things because that's what the universe has been asking me to do is have more focus. You know, I tend to put my energy in so many different things and you know, I'm a Gemini, you know, I want to, I want to have my hands in everything. I'm, you know, just bursting with creativity. Um, but this is another deck that's asking me to just be in the present, be mindful, be focused on the task at hand, and then you can move on to something else. Um, it's been great for meditation as well. So yeah, this is also a recent acquisition. This was, hmm, maybe late July, I got this. This one is the Sugar and Spice Oracle um, by Jasmine Johnson. Yes, I remember. <laughs> um, I, I just did a review of this, but the review will not air until this coming Sunday, so you won't be able to see it till then. But this is an Etsy deck, and I just... I, it's girly and I don't have a whole lot of like girly girly cards, you know, like pink and saccharine sweet, you know, type cards. I have a couple that are cutesy like kawaii, but um, this is like my super sweet deck and I love the messages. It's been like crazy. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you're a little heavier hitting than I thought you'd be. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, this is a great deck. It wasn't terribly expensive. Actually, it was it was really reasonable. It wasn't expensive at all. And I just, yeah, I've really been loving it. And one I didn't get in July. I forgot when I got it earlier in the year. Um, but you know, ice cream Oracle, it's July, it's hot. <laughs> um, this one I am still using. I'm using it for my daily draws. I have it paired, uh, with the next deck that I'm actually going to show you. Um, but this has all different types of ice cream. It's got a little keyword down at the bottom. There isn't a guidebook or anything, but I really like it. I like the colors. So I use it as my color of the month as well when I do my monthly readings for myself. Um, so yeah, I, I am digging the ice cream Oracle and this one I got, where did I get this? Game Crafter. So if, if you're interested, you know, head on over to Game Crafter. I like, you know, doing those kind of like print on demand places. So like makeplayingcards.com, Printer Studio, Game Crafter. I think they have some wonderful decks there and they're really reasonably priced. So because it's like shipping direct, so definitely check it out. Okay. So this was the, the deck that I said that the other one was getting paired with. And, the, and this is the Practical Magic Tarot. 
and this is by uh, Chingay Labrador from the PI, the Philippines. You know, I'm there to support my homegirl. Um, and this is a collage deck that is one of my soul decks. And I think I've mentioned that like a bazillion times. I made like a bazillion videos. Exaggeration, hyperbole much. Um, with this deck. <laughs> Let's just say I made a lot of videos and I've talked a lot about it and I've given her a lot of love um, and I will continue to give her a lot of love and her business is doing really well. She's doing really well with this deck. So I'm super happy for her. Um, the images are just me and there's nothing else I could say. It just, it's, it's, it's my soul deck. <laughs> All right, we are down to the last two. Uh, the first of the last is the Journey to the Goddess Realm Oracle deck by Lisa Porter. And I just happened to be scrolling through the Instagrams, which can be dangerous, I guess. Um, and you know, people are always posting like their spreads and their cards of the day, or they do like a pick a card uh, on Instagram. And um, I forgot who's, whose Instagram I was looking at, but she had this deck. There was a card that she pulled that she also pulled from a different deck that in the image from here it was green Terra, goddess Terra, and i work a lot with goddess Terra, green Terra, and white Terra, um and i also work with kuan yin i feel like they have um pretty similar energies um and some people say that oh the, one is like the the hindi version and the other one's like the buddhist version of like the same energy but i i feel like even though they are very similar and energy wise, I, I feel like they're just a little bit different because it is two different cultures. But anyway, so this is the backs. And as soon as I saw that, that card on Instagram, I was like, I gotta get it. And I am so happy that I did. So it's, it's been a great deck to work with. Um, up at the top, you have the name of the goddess and then you have a keyword down at the bottom. Uh, the guidebook goes into a little bit more detail. It's not a ton of detail about the uh, deity, but I really, I really like it. You know, I, I love the art too. So that's, that's kind of like my style of art. Actually, when I was in, I would say elementary school, a lot of our books had like this kind of art. And I was, I, I was so, I was so focused in like the art in our books. I probably didn't read like some of the problems, like it would be in our math books. And I was just like, Ooh, I'd be more focused on the art than the math problem. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. Did I, I pass goddess Tara, but I want you to see the card that started it all. Sorry, it was white Terra, but yes, Terra Serenity. Yes, I have that top. I wore it in the monthly, the, the monthly reading that I did, the pick a card reading for August. I was like, ah. <laughs> of course I had already gotten the deck, but I was like, I was like using the deck and I was like, oh my God, that's my shirt. <laughs> And the final deck, the final fave for July. I, I could probably go on and on because basically everything that I'm surrounded with, the people that I'm surrounded with, my little keychain that I'm surrounded with, the dude, um, all my friends, yes, I mentioned that. All you guys, like, you guys are my faves. If I'm going to get just, like, squishy with you. <laughs> I'm going to get squishy sweet. Um, but, yeah, I am, I'm surrounded by faves all day, every day. And I am quite blessed because of it. So here we go on to my final fave, uh, so to speak, for July. And that is the Queen of the Moon Oracle. Uh, and this is from Rockpool Publishing by Stacey DeMarco. And I was super excited because this has been out for a while and I've been seeing people work with it. And I was like, I don't know. I was like hemming and hawing. And I didn't know if like, this was a deck that I wanted and now that I have it I'm like what took you so long <laughs> but yeah the messages and again having me dive in and be patient and focus you know on the message has been great because sometimes my mind tends to go a million miles an hour and uh, that's probably where a lot of my anxiety comes from because I, I, I tend to think about a lot of things and sometimes I overthink things. And so decks like this and like, uh, you know, the, the journey into the goddess and the other ones I talked about, the magic and mediums, uh, the mystic grove, you know, all those types of decks have really been great about helping me 
to sit down and focus. And it's actually been helping my anxiety because I, I do get anxiety flare-ups from time to time. You know, I am human. So yeah, it's been really helpful and it's gorgeous. You know, I don't know when I started getting into like photo manipulation decks because that used to really not be my bag. And now it is my bag. That is my bag, baby. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. All right, you guys, that's it. Those were all of my faves for July. But like I said, I am so blessed and so grateful to be surrounded by faves day in and day out everything that i own everybody that i get to call friend family you guys i consider you guys my friends as well i i am surrounded by so much goodness um that you know i, I probably could make a whole video about that that'd be more like a documentary <laughs> So anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Maybe you got some ideas about repurposing some things that you have. Uh, maybe you forgot about certain things that you have and you want to bust them back out again. You know, reduce, reuse, recycle. Maybe you have some things where you're like, hmm, I need to get rid of those things. <laughs> you know, maybe the faves like kind of help you to do a little little cleansing through the house, a little KonMari method, uh, which I do quite often now, which, which is easier now that I've done like the big clean with Kanmari's book now. Now I just need know when I need to go through and, and take some stuff out and have a bag that's perpetually off to the side that's like for the goodwill like all the time. So I'm always just throwing stuff in there. So anyway, I thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you dug this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click subscribe and don't forget to click that ding 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 notification bell for more videos just like this. And if you wanna catch a reading for me, possibly using any of the large number of decks that I just went through, uh, just let me know upon booking and you can head over to www.kittensweightsandtarot.com. Um, and you could also get, hold on, give me just a second while I almost knock the camera over. My Wally's World Oracle is also on my website. So like I said, it's on Etsy, but if you want that free shipping and you want it to be $5 cheaper, head <laughs> to my website. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and that's little Wally on the world. Actually, when he was a little kitten. Aww. So anyway, um, hello, my baby. <laughs> I love Loki too, but I didn't, I wish I had Loki when he was like a little kitten too. How cute would he have been as like a little black puff? Oh my gosh. He's cute now too with his big psycho golden eyes, but I'm going to make a video of those two one day. Anyway, um, so that's that. And if you want to send a little love my way, maybe join that KWT tribe over at patreon.com slash kittens, weights, and tarot, uh, where I do a lot of goodies for you guys over there. So maybe go check that out. I do monthly crystal grids, uh, weekly draws. Um, I do bi-yearly readings and some yearly readings. I do energetic healings. I do like distance healings and stuff like that. I do live chats uh, once a month. Um, we do some mediumship stuff. So there's a lot of stuff over there. So definitely go check that out. And that's it for me, spiritual homies. All right, I will catch you later. I will catch you next month with August faves. <laughs> so anyway, peace, love, and chicken grease. Peace out. Ha <laughs>